Pedro from EMP Reacts. I'm here today with PV of Rage to talk about the new record Resurrection Day out September 17th on Steam Hammer. How's things going with you? Everything, everything fine over here. Talking like a motherfucker all day. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm looking, also looking forward for the release and uh, for hopefully good reactions of the people. And I'm proud to be invited by you. <laughs> well, I, I'm, it's an honor to finally have you on the channel. We've been listening to your music on our channel for a very long time. My son is a huge fan of you guys. And oh. <laughs> I, I got to tell you, this new record, this new record is outstanding. Outst I just want to start off by saying that, like, I was expecting a good album. You guys surpassed my my loftiest of expectations. Wow. Thank you. That's a big praise, man. <laughs> Wow. Absolutely incredible, and that's where I kind of want to start. Do you do you feel like this is a record that becomes the culmination of the previous twenty five albums that kind of brought you to this point where you currently are? Surely it is. I mean, of course, you, you always start from where you just ended, and uh, I think we already had a pretty good mix on Wings of Rage, uh, which I plan to uh, continue for the new one and maybe even even get it more homogeneous, you know. Um, all the, to bring all the all the different musical trademarks that this band has developed over the years, you know, from all these thrashy elements over the hymnic um, metal hymns, you know, and all this epic orchestrated stuff, you know, to bring this all together in a, in a good working way, you know, in a good functioning way. And I think we did a good job for, on this new album. Um, Despite of uh, of the the lineup problems we had in the beginning of last year, you know, uh, when our former guitar player Marcus unfortunately had to leave the band, which uh, was um, he's uh, the most saddest guy in the world that he had to do this decision. You know, he was it was his childhood dream to be in Rage, you know, to play in, in Rage, and but he got, he really got some very serious private problems that forced him to. This music with. And so I had to replace not only him, also I wanted to have a second guitar player in the band. And we brought in then the new guys, Stefan and Jean, which uh, now due to the pandemic situation that forced us all to stay home and we couldn't tour. You know. So we had plenty of time to grow together as a, as a unit again and with these new guys and to uh, work on new songs. Uh, we got this new album, so maybe touring was from the album. With, with these lineup changes and, and with the title Resurrection Day, do you feel like this is a little bit of a re resurrection of rage? <laughs> um, I wouldn't really call it a resurrection for rage because we have never been down or so we have never been dead before, you know. <laughs> um, the the title is meant more a bit picturized, you know, uh, for the general situation of uh, of the world right now, you know. And um, when I, when I wrote um, most of the stuff for the album, it was already by the end of 2019, long before all this happened, you know. And so it's not that directly um, put on on the on the pandemic situation, but fits a little bit you know and uh, when we started to work on the stuff we everybody thought like okay it's going to be over with all this shit uh latest by spring of this year you know it was not we see now you know but we thought we'll be coming out with this album then the pandem pandemic is pretty much over you know <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately it was not you know <laughs> however <laughs> It's, it's, it's interesting wh where things started and where things are. It, it, w when I look at this record, I have to, to think about your own creative process. I mean, you have tons of experience. You guys have released, you know, 20, well, 26 now, 26 albums. Has anything changed for you across across all of those records? Like, are, are you the same creative mind now? Are you attacked an album creatively the same way now that you did 25 records ago? Yes. I have to say, I'm, it's not for me. Nothing really changed. I'm still. I love writing songs, you know, and I still do it pretty much the same way, like I did 20 uh, or 40 years ago. You know, when I started, I always write my stuff on a classical guitar on the, on the six string on this nylon string, you know, uh, which I already did back then. 
and nothing nothing of this has changed now. I'm still a complete idiot in doing demos, you know. <laughs> Mostly I just still use my old cassette player <laughs> and just jam on my guitar and sing along to it, you know. And then I explain later to um to my musicians how I um, how I see the, the arrangement of the song, you know, like concerning grooves and stuff, you know, and um for me, nothing really has changed in, in the way how I work, you know. Uh, the the mm. question that I have for you is that you mentioned already having a second guitar player on this album. Uh, what do you see the change that that has done for this, the way this record sounds and the way this record comes across? What do you felt it was missing that adding that second guitar player? I mean, it's nothing new for you guys, but adding that second guitar player at this point brings something new to the table. Yeah, we the, the idea to bring a second guitar player, we had already by... Uh, the end of 2019, when Marcus was still in the band, we wanted to bring Stefan into the band by the middle of next year, which would, would have been last year. <laughs> um, because uh, we always we, we saw that we always uh, um, reaching into problems when with uh, um, the in the live situation, bringing the the songs, uh, the more complex arrangements, bring them on stage you know, with one guitar. Before we had already some. Uh, for some tours, we had guest guitar players, for example, on a tour with us. And then I just said, why don't we just add a, a regular second guitar player in the lineup, you know? There's no no problem problem about this, and even Marcus had no problem with this. So we thought of Stefan, because Stefan was the guitar player in Marcus' second band. You know, he, he had a, a Dio cover band, Dio Legacy is the name, uh, and Stefan was playing there. And so he, he actually, Marcus... Uh, Suggested Stefan to be the second guitar player. Um, and then unfortunately he had to leave by uh, last year in, what was it, February. So he had to leave the band for private problems I mentioned already. And then of course we, we added Stefan and also Gene. Um, and it's uh, the big advantage of course is that for the first of all, for the life situation, it's a lot easier to uh, perform your stuff uh, with the more complex ar arrangements, you know, and for the new album, I think we um, we um, allowed ourselves to have more harmonic uh, stuff, more uh, harmony guitars, more double twin solos, as all all this stuff, you know, because um, it's we know it's so easy to bring this on stage. So we we did more, I guess, of this. You know? <laughs> Maybe it, it shows yeah. in the album. <laughs> You mentioned also orchestrations. I, I, I really love the orchestrations on this record for two reasons. One, you guys didn't overuse it. It's not like you're going to get them on every single track. But the songs in which you use it, they really feel big. They feel like cinematic, almost like a, like a movie score. Uh, exactly. Was that something that you were careful with? Like you wanted to use them, but at the same time not overburden the listener with, with it in every single track? Exactly, just just what you say. Uh, it, it's not the meaning that everything has to be orchestrated, but some songs they really demand it, and then we want to use it. It's a uh, it, it has been a trademark of the Rage Town now for over 25 years, I would say, uh, since we did Lingua Mortis in '96, I guess. Um, so it it, it has a, a meaning for for the Rage Town, and um, for those songs that really demand it and that really uh, grow. Uh, grow better with an orchestration we use it and um, another um, thing why it's uh, so well done this time is Pepe Herrero the guy that did the orchestrations from Spain he comes in from Madrid he's a uh, friend of the band since a couple of years already he used to work for us as a conductor of the Lingua Modus Orchestra when we did the last tour we did in 2019 a festival tour over summer with uh, plenty of shows with his orchestra and um, that's how we grew a bit more together and for this album now I ask him to contribute with uh, orchestrations for four of the songs which he did brilliantly he, he's um, I don't know if you know his other works what he's doing in Spain he's a really famous guy he works with all the all big artists over there, you know, um, not in not only in metal business, in, in in general, in traditional music or so. He works for TV productions, for films and everything. He's kind of well known over there for um, being a kind of um, uh, I don't know um, John Williams 
<laughs> the Spanish John Williams or something like that. You know? <laughs> Right. Well, having somebody that you've worked with before, having somebody that you know, did that make the job easier in terms of then bringing the guitars in? Because I thought, listening to this album, the songs that have the orchestration, the way the guitars and the orchestration are weaved together is flawless. And that's not an easy thing to do because sometimes one thing overshadows the other and vice versa. So having him being somebody who you are familiar with, did that help that process? Yeah, I mean, like I said, uh, Pedro, uh, Pepe Herrero is a um, very professional musician and he knows all, about all this. He plays himself also guitar in a metal band in Spain, Stravaganza. So he's the expert in weaving all this together, you know, and of course the same goes for, for me. I also do this kind of arrangements now since a couple of years and we um, the songs were already composed in this direction, of course, and then the, uh, his or orchestral arrangements were uh, woven into the guitar stuff, you know, because he knows really good what he's doing there, you know. It's, he's not, it's not like uh, some other orchestrators that don't, don't really understand about a metal arrangement, you know. They would, like, uh, set up a, an orchestral arrangement that works like runs in parallel or so to the band, you know. He really brought it in the whole music, you know, which just like you described it, you know, and makes me really proud. And something else you should be proud of is your vocals on this album. I felt like they were so good. They were very organic. They were raw. They had a lot of life in them. Do you prepare specifically for an album? Do you get something from the lyrical content that takes you into this zone? And then you just go with it. How does it work? Um, I think it works just from my long year experience. You know, after all these years, I know pretty good how a song should be interpreted. You know, um, I know what I want to say with with the songs. You know, and I try to give the songs what they need. You know, in in terms of aggression, or also in feeling. You know, and um, yeah. I'm, I'm glad that you say this, you know, that you really that you really like what I did there. I always just hope to do my best, you know. <laughs> and, uh, I, I realize that, uh, you know, after nearly 40 years, I'm just um, getting better, you know, as a singer, you know. <laughs> yeah. Not, yeah. Now, not only now, of course, a couple of, since a couple of years, but it, it's getting better with every year, you know. The older I get, the um, more I know what I'm doing there, you know. And also, my... My voice feels really good. I don't know why I'm not doing anything. You know, I'm not really practicing something or so. I'm doing some advert, uh, some whatever uh, rehearsal stuff or so. I'm just singing, you know. And maybe one of the things is that I never sing all over my range, you know. I always uh, try to keep my melody lines within my range, you know. When I realize there's maybe a, one or two notes that stick out of this, you know, that kind of... Uh, I have to strain myself to reach them, you know, and um, it sounds a bit like, uh, wow, this guy's suffering to reach there, you know. Then I just take him out and, and, uh, and exchange him to something that sounds easy and cool, you know. Um, that's always the first thing I, that I want to have my, my vocal lines say should sound easy, that I can do this easily, you know, that I'm not uh, suffering to sing this, you know. And one, one of the songs in which your vocals gave me goosebumps was Black Room. What a what a track. Like, that song is phenomenal. I, I just, the only thing I felt was it came a little bit too deep into the track listing. Are you concerned that that track uh, loses a little bit of its luster because of how deep it is? Or you or you, you like it where it is because it, it has its, its spot there? I, I, I kind of liked it a little bit earlier on because it's such an incredible track. Yeah, that's that's an argument, really. Uh, I don't know. We we had a long discussion of where to where to put what song. You know, um, I understand your point. It could it could make a different impact if it would come a bit earlier. You know, but I mean, this was decided by all of us, and in the end, at least it's on the album. You know, <laughs> you know well, who, who knows? It has to be on the album. Who, who knows in what position is the best? The best the best impression you know, for a song, you know, I don't, um, of course, the, the, the more you listen to it, then you get, uh, you get a feeling if it's, uh, if it works like this or, so, or not, you know, um, 
I could also imagine also the last song, Extinction Overkill, could have could have been a bit earlier, you know. Um, <laughs> also, we we had a lot more songs that we recorded than were on the album, you know. You can imagine what a discussion we had of what songs are going to be on the album and which ones not, you know. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's a good problem to have when you have that much quality that you can choose from. Yes, I mean we agreed now to really at least release the other songs that were not used now for the album. We're going to release them sooner or later, maybe next year or so, when we finally come back to touring or so. Uh, then we have at least some, whatever, EP or something in, in our hands, you know, to push the touring. You know. However, yeah. we're, going to, we're going to put the stuff out because it's uh, too good to be just uh, thrown away or so, you know. Yeah, and, and I agree with you. Like more material from Rage is always a good thing. So uh, it, 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 don't, don't throw anything away. Just no. use everything down the road. That's that's the that's the policy. That that should be the policy with the band. Uh, was there a track on this record that offer you a little bit of a of a hard time, or you guys had a hard time as a band to kind of getting it to where you needed to go? Maybe give you some white hairs. <clears throat> white hairs. I wouldn't really say white hairs. Um. For me, uh, at the track like, um, um, what is the title? Um, um, the Age of Reason. This this one was in the beginning when I when we started with this. It was not really hundred percent clear where the journey would go with it. Um, uh, there's there there were some ideas coming that came from Gene and from both from Stefan, uh, which didn't really I didn't really maybe understand exactly what, how they how they meant it or so, you know. In the beginning, I was not 100% clear, but then over the time of the production, it uh, everything developed in a way that uh, when I uh, understood uh, what it is about, you know, and now, of course, it's uh, I'm 100% fine with the song, you know, but in the beginning, I was a, bit, a little bit like, hmm, is this the right, the right way to go, you know. Um, now I'm happy that we did it, you know. But this would would if you talk about problems, you know, I would re even call it problems, you know. But this was the only one that was not hundred percent clear clear to me from the beginning on, you know. From the beginning, uh, when you take a step back from this record and you kind of look back at the work that went into this album, of how this album sounds, how it feels to you, is this the best rage of the last ten years? <laughs> mm, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Why not? Would be would be at least one of the one of the highlights, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the album. I can, I can. I mean, it's pretty close to me still, you know, pretty pretty near everything. Um, but I have to say that I I like it and I still like it very much. I wouldn't change anything right now. And yeah, let's hope that it becomes one of the highlights of the last ten years. Last question for you. In my mind, it is. So at least for, for whatever that it's worth, this album is just phenomenal. I, I think you guys have just an incredible record on your hands. Last question for you. After 26 albums, what keeps you motivated? What keeps you coming back for more? The music, definitely. Uh, I mean, you can imagine uh, even... Uh, I'm lucky that we're all possible to um, to live from this, you know, what we're doing here. But of course, we we uh, we we're not in a position where we become millionaires or so, you know. There's, uh, I guess, easier jobs to make more money. <laughs> but um, this is not never never has been the point for me to do this, you know. I just love to write these songs, to, to play this music, to perform this, and record it. And this was always a motivation for me, you know. Um, maybe it's a kind of um, 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 therapy for me to write songs, you know. <laughs> and I, I would do it anyway, you know. If I would do this band or not, I would still be writing songs. So it, it's, therapy, it's therapy for you and therapy for your fans that get to listen to the music and, and experience uh, the incredible stuff that you guys have created. <laughs> so, uh, so on Call behalf me. of the fans, I got to thank you. <laughs> Call me the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God, this is the doctor of rage. The doctor of rage. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you, thank you very much for your time. Best of luck uh, in all the the success in the world with this release on September seventeenth on Steam Hammer. Thank you for taking the time to chat with me, and uh, I hope to see you on the road soon. Yeah, thank you also very very much, and uh, all the best to your listeners. And uh, yeah, hope to see you soon. Be Take great. care.
Take care, everyone. <laughs>